What's going on? It's Ryan here, CEO and head quant at Happy Trader. Today, we are going to be going over call options in depth. This isn't just going to be buying call options. This isn't going to be YOLOing. This is going to be responsible uh, options trading and how call options actually work. And most importantly, if you're holding a lot of stock, um, how if you choose to take that stock, sell it, free up the buying power, and then still control and still stay, you know, keep some skin in the game, so to speak, by using call options. So let's head right into uh, E-Trade. Well, first, actually, let's look at this buy signal that started on December uh, 7th. Oh, my goodness. So the whole month, right? So you know, I mean, talk about a Santa rally, right? So we had our uptrend signal. And if you had happytrader.io and you set your alert, uh, let's say you're a swing trader. Well, you would have got that great little Santa rally alert um, on the sentiment AI buy signal right here. And then um, you would have got a notification in app email, whatever way you, you know, you want to uh, play a sound, play a handbell on the computer, all that good stuff. So with that being said, let's hop into the options chain. And we're just going to compare what it looks like to hold a lot of dollars worth of stock compared to maybe, you know, let's say that the NASDAQ has gone up all year long and we maybe want to uh, deplane things and de-risk a little bit heading into the new year. You know, we have funds that are selling off and rebalancing and, you know, big money's doing all sorts of stuff. And, you know, at the end of the year, like right at the end of the year after the Santa rally, typically is when, you know, funds are going to start to rebalance and things are going to change. And, you know, there's buying, there's selling, there's all sorts of stuff going on. Right. So you don't want to get caught up in that as a retail trader uh, necessarily, unless your risk tolerance is that you want to lose all of your money. So uh, that's what's good about, um, you know, converting to options. And this is something I like to do. Disclaimer, this is not financial advice. I'm not telling you how to trade. I'm not telling you what to trade. I'm just telling you what works for me. So without further ado, let's hop into it. We're going to hit paper trading. Um, let's say, for instance, we wanted to buy 100 shares of the NASDAQ at $40,928. Does that seem expensive to you? I mean, it does to me, right? Um, because if you go to another ticker like Robinhood, it's going to be a lot less. We're not going to do that, though. We're going to focus on the Qs. That's going to be your NASDAQ 100. So big tech, right? So big tech ran pretty much the whole year. So what I decided to do was sell stock. Now, when you sell stock, if you know, if you have stock and if you sell it, you're subject to those short-term capital gains, but that's the downside. The upside is that you don't have to lose, you know, maybe 50%, uh, take a huge haircut if you're holding that bag over the holiday and then all of a sudden the market gaps down and then we open up the new year to, you know, just tremendous amounts of panic selling, right? Potentially, we don't know what's going to happen. Furthermore, what I want to kind of illustrate and demonstrate here, if you look at the dotted line, this is the current value, the current price uh, around, you know, QQQ. And if you obviously, you know, if your stock goes up, you're going to make money. If it goes down, you're going to lose money. But that's a little asymmetric because look at the theoretical P&L. If we get all the way from, you know, 4, 409 to, you know, 428, you know, I mean, it's just asymmetrical, right? It doesn't make sense to put $40,000. This is just logically. It doesn't make sense to put $40,000 on the line to make a potential, let's call it $2,000, right? Could be more than that. It depends on how much the market runs. Now, could you get lucky and hold the stock and the market just keeps going up and up and up forever and doesn't correct? Or when it does correct, you're already so in the green that it really, you know, it doesn't bug you too much. I don't know. That depends on your risk tolerance. But for me, I don't like losing money, right? So that's why I designed a happy trader and our signals. I don't like losing money. I'd rather trade and convert stock. If I feel the need, let's say I'm dollar cost averaging into a stock position and you know it's getting a little uh, profitable and I want to take that position off uh, and convert it to an option, it just makes a lot more sense because I don't have all of that money on the table, not to mention I get to free up all that buying power. So let's go back to the order ticket. Now, instead of $40,000 for 100 shares, uh, what we can do is just switch over to the calls, right? Um, and we can go to the options chain and we can just get rid of the strikes. And we can see 
that, you know, we have different sets of days to expiration, as you probably already know, right? So, um, you know, we're just going to go out, let's say, you know, 30 days. Let's say we want to sell our stock. You know, we did really well in 2023, and we don't know what the beginning of 2024 is going to look like. We don't know what the gap's going to look like. We have a holiday coming up. We have bank holidays, rebalancing, geopolitical, all that stuff, right? So what you can do and I'm not telling you to do it, but what you can do and what I do is you can hop into, let's say, a 30-day call option, right? So let's go into this a little bit. Let's actually expand this up all the way into the screen so you can see it. Now, what are we doing exactly, right? So you, you might know what a call option is. You might know it's leverage. You might know um, some things about it, right? You might know that you lose money on them all the time or maybe you win money on them all the time. Who knows, right? But the point is, you know, going long a call option is really going to give you control over a set percentage. Um, and it's going to be a variable percentage of the underlying. So let's say we wanted to sell that $40,000 in stock. And let's say we bought it at the beginning of the year, we took our gains and we're paying our short short term capital gains. Well, we can buy a call option for, let's say, 29, 30 days to expiration out of the money, but one strike out of the money and control 54% of that $40,000 position. Now, if we gap up, let's say, you know, we do get lucky, right? And we gap up um, over, you know, and this would synthesize essentially holding all of that 40K of stock. Um, if we go down, you're going to take a haircut. If we go up, you know, and, and you're holding an option, what happens is the delta goes up, right? You get deeper in the money and you're automatically controlling a higher percentage. And you can see all the way up to um, the last strike here, which is 74%. Now, if you go out further in time, you can get to where you're controlling 90%, like the 90 delta deep in the money. And look at the bargain pricing here. So even 30 days out, let's say you wanted you know, almost all of that $40,000 exposure, you could go deep in the money. But what I like to do is control a large portion. If I have conviction in a move and I anticipate that if I buy at the money or one strike out of the money or a couple strikes out of the money to get a little bit of a bargain, you don't want to go crazy out of the money. I don't want to go crazy out of the money. Um, but what happens is when you buy that call, you only have, let's, let's bring it up. So we'll bring up the call. We'll just flip it to buy. And we have, look, a $718 control over 54% of $40,000, right? Not bad, right? So if this goes in the money, meaning if we gap up, you know, all of a sudden we could just find ourselves after the new year controlling like 64%. And instead of spending that thousand dollars, you know, we're already, you know, doing good because we only spent 718, not to mention the other 40, you know, $39,300 is off the table. And if you go to the snapshot analysis, you can just see that now instead of holding stock, you know, we do have a more symmetrical type of risk reward profile with a max loss. Hey, not bad, right? If we lose $700 because the market crashes over the new year or we get a huge correction, a double uh, bottom, triple bottom, whatever you want to call it for the NASDAQ, right? And we just get that correction and 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 it breathes, right? The market breathes. It's very natural. Um, what would you rather lose if the market keeps going down? What would you rather lose if we have a major geopolitical event? Is it Forty thousand dollars, or twenty. Let's call it twenty thousand dollars. Let's think back to uh, two thousand and eight, the financial crisis. Let's look at about a fifty percent haircut there. Um, or does it not really matter if you just want to put on that thirty days position? See how January goes uh, for less than one k, right? So um, controlling, you know, a majority, right? So more than fifty percent, right? And potentially up to a huge percentage, almost all of the initial investment with that call, that single call option is a much more symmetrical risk reward ratio. So uh, that's today's video. I'm going to keep it pretty short and concise. Um, 
hopefully that made sense in regard to Delta and controlling stock. And, you know, when you buy a call, it's not always necessarily that you're controlling the full notional of the underlying. It does depend on the Delta, but this makes a heck of a lot more sense to me when the max profit is infinite, whether it's the stock or the option. Again, this is Ryan, CEO and head quant here at Happy Trader. Have a great day, happy trading, and good luck.